Hello guys, have you ever needed to run some kind of temporary query, one-time query in your project? Have you ever done something like this or maybe seen others doing that? So creating some kind of temporary route for like test or something and then running something in the browser just to quickly test something or run something. And there's no need to create the route. It's not even convenient. So you need to create the route. And if you want to run that in production, then you need to upload your code or push your code to GitHub, which is temporary and then delete that. Do not forget to delete that. And also it may be a security issue. If that route is public without any middleware or without permission, then someone else can access that route. So this is not an ideal solution. And in this video, I will show you five different ways or five different tools to do the same thing, to achieve the same thing or even more without creating the route. And it will be all based on a Laravel tool called PHP Artisan Tinker. Tinker is included in every Laravel project, but around that tinkering, there's a whole ecosystem of different tools, which makes the Tinker even better. Let's see the examples. So if we transform that example into PHP Artisan Tinker in your Laravel project, with Tinker you get a common line client to launch any PHP or Laravel code. So we can launch the same thing, what was user count, users equals user count, like this. And it executes the same statement and returns the same result as I would receive in the browser. So slash test returns also 10. So that's a simple example, but your eloquent query could be much more complicated, like orders with something, get, group by, map, collection, something like that. So it could be a complicated statement. The only limitation is it has to be on one line of code, but even that could be avoided. Later in the video, I will show you how with Tinker or other tools, but generally you can launch anything here. And here are my most typical example of using Tinker use cases. So first is launching any eloquent query, because for example, you want some report from the database, but you are too lazy, so to speak, to run SQL query in your SQL client in the database client. So you would rather write some eloquent statement to get some data. So that's one case. Another case is creating some data. Really typical scenario is creating the admin user, the first super user. So you open the tinker and do user create and then pass the array of name equals something, or email equals something and stuff like that. So that is one time user creation, especially in the beginning of the project. Another use case is launching some kind of a service or a job or class. Like for example, you have a job to send invitation to someone. So you do job class equals, for example, new some class, and then do job launch or something. So you have some kind of service where you need to launch something and it's easier to write that in the tinker than creating a separate route or separate admin panel function, just one time launch of something. For example, send notifications, send invitation, regenerate something for a specific record. For example, in our quick admin panel, by the way, we did it, or actually my colleague David did it a lot of times, regenerate the panel. So you know the panel ID, which is kind of broken or something, and you can launch some kind of feature like regenerate the panel in your service with panel ID, and it does the job. There's no route for that, there's no admin panel function, but you can do it with Tinker. Or similar scenario is to test some service, whether it works correctly or not. So for example, new class, for example, some service, it's not actually the class, the name should be some service class, then launch some get results from somewhere with parameters, and then view those results in the tinker to test if it actually works. And you could argue you could write a test for that, like unit test or feature test, but it's easier to do that with Tinker. And it actually can go both ways. First, you can write that in Tinker and then copy that code into the test. So you can create the test later, just tinker around, try it out, test things manually, and then write a unit test, automated test for that. So these are the typical cases where I use Tinker or I've seen other people using that. And there is one limitation, as I told you, it should be on one line. And to avoid that limitation, there are a few ways. With the Tinker itself, there are two ways how you can avoid it. First, you can create a separate PHP file in your root folder, for example, test PHP. And then inside of that, you can launch whatever you want. So it's a typical PHP script. And then you can launch that PHP script with PHP Artisan 
tinker and then space and add that parameter file name. So test PHP and it would execute the file inside of it. So that's one way. Or even inside of the tinker, when you are already launching the tinker, you can do edit and it will open text editor for you in the terminal where you can enter your code line by line and then exit. So this is without any external tools. And if you want more like friendly tools, there are tools, free or not free. First, let's take a look at Spotty package called Laravel Web Tinker. It allows you to have a specific web page from two sides. First side is writing code. The right hand side is for outputting the result. The installation is really simple. You just compose a require, but dash dash dev is important. I will zoom it in a bit because it should be launched only on your local environment. It's not really recommended to tinker on production. I mean tinker in a route way, so it does create the route. And I did that in my local project. And if I go to tinker, I get this panel. Oh, it actually saved my tinkering from yesterday. Didn't expect that. So basically you can launch then multiple statements. So orders or orders, something like that and then click command enter and it would execute that like a typical artisan tinker but with bigger font with multiple lines allowed and in more user-friendly way and this package is free laravel web tinker by spotty also there's a premium tool on the market not free tinker well by beyond code company also well known in laravel community disclaimer i'm not affiliated with them i don't get paid for this review or demo i just asked them actually for a demo version so I will use Tinkerwell inside of this demo, but I don't get paid for that. So what it allows you to do, and you can see that in a few videos in the GIF below, but let's try to open it up. It's a desktop application, it's not a web thing. So you open the project, for example, the same Laravel, and you can do the same things like order count, for example and it executes in real time as you saw. So there's no even need to click enter or click run or something. So that's one benefit. And it has some more features that I will demonstrate to you now. So if you want to add, for example, order all to get the data, this is one way of getting the data, like in usual Tinker, but you can also enable so-called table mode. And then when you execute that, it will show you the data in the table mode. A really user-friendly way, visible like your SQL client, but with the difference that you run eloquent queries and not SQL queries. And you can order the fields here, and you can even save the CSV for that. Cool. Also, if you want to inspect the queries, so for example, you have a query of some kind, you can highlight the query you want, click combination of common shift R on my Mac, and it will inspect your query. So actually show what query is executed, the time, the duration, and the memory usage. So you don't need to install any Laravel debug bar, telescope, Laravel array, or other tools. It could be inside of the Tinkerwell. Of course, it doesn't debug the full page, but if you want to try some query, how it is executed on real database, you can use Tinkerwell. Also, Tinkerwell solves a typical problem of using Laravel Tinker. So if you launch a regular artisan Tinker from Laravel, if you do some code changes, meanwhile, so you test some data and you think that you need to make some changes in the code, you make some changes. Quite often people forget to restart the Tinker because Tinker is active only for that session, for that version of the code. And if you made some changes, you need to terminate the Tinker and then launch it again to make the code changes active. So in Tinkerwell, you don't need to do that. You just launch your code, make the changes into the code externally, and then launch it again. Also, you can save that Tinkerwell snippet for future use. So for typical snippet, it's probably only for one time use, but what if you have some snippet that you can launch from time to time, like monthly report or repeating command or something. So you can save that in Tinkerwell, just click save file, and then you can open it at any time later. Or for example, a typical scenario is that Tinker command that you launch locally. And then at some point you need to launch that on staging server or on production server when the feature is approved. It could be in a month or so. So how would you remember what you have written here? You can save that into a file or even actually upload it to your repository if you wish. And speaking about working with remote servers on production on testing server with Tinkerwell, you can SSH into your server. It can be done even easier with Laravel Forge as I can see. And then you can launch your commands remotely. Again, it's not safe to tinker if you create the route for that, the web route, which could be accessible for anyone. 
but if you SSH into your machine, it's kind of like the same thing as you do SSH and launch your command with PHP Artisan Tinker. So you can do that with Tinker well, launching more than one line of script from your local computer connecting to SSH. And actually, you don't even need to have Laravel project to use Tinkerwell. It's inside of Tinkerwell, the Laravel default project. So you can open Tinkerwell and launch some Laravel command. For example, if you want to test some Laravel command, like for example, collection of one, two, three, and then average like this, it launches Laravel commands without any Laravel project assigned to it. So I'm not sure if you're sold on Tinkerwell. I didn't want to advertise it to you, but if you want to buy that, here's the price, 29 euros for me. Maybe it will be different for your country. I'm not sure if it's converting to other currency or maybe some discounts, not sure. But also there are other tools, which I haven't run, but I will show you. There is a Tinker Run, Tinker.run, pretty new and the author explained on Reddit in another post that he created it inspired by Tinkerwell. So it's also a desktop application, probably with less features because it doesn't have any documentation. It has only changelog and there's also a Visual Studio Code plugin for that. I don't use Visual Studio Code, so I couldn't really test that, but there is one if you want. Let's actually click and see. Okay, you can install it from VS Code Marketplace. And speaking of marketplaces, last tool number five is Laravel Tinker plugin for PHP Storm. So for VS Code, there's Tinker Run, which you have seen. Again, I haven't tested it, but for PHP Storm, there's Laravel Tinker. I also didn't test it, but it looks like it does pretty much the same thing as Laravel Web Tinker in Spidey. You run some commands and see the output on the right. Pretty similar. So what do you think? Do you tinker a lot? Or if you haven't before, will you tinker more in the future? Because I know some of you don't even know that the tinker exists in Laravel. And maybe some of you who do know the tinker didn't really use that much or haven't used the external tools like web tinker or tinkerwell or others. And if you have other usages of tinker, which I haven't mentioned in this video, your ideas are welcome in the comments. Also subscribe to the channel because I'm shooting the videos daily now for last months already without any pause, without any breaks daily. And if you want to support that mission, check out the three products that you can see on the screen from myself and my team, admin panel generator, live wire kit set of components, and my courses on Teachable, currently 19 courses. See you guys in the next video on YouTube.